Yo, what it do guys, and welcome to a Phasmophobia equipment guide. So I'm just going to try and run through all 22 items in the game. Uh, I'm also going to go ahead and link everything inside the description below, so if you do want to jump to an item nice and quick, you can always go ahead and find the timestamp. And on top of that, I just want to go and say that the current patch we are on is 0.176.39. The reason why I'm bringing up the patch here is because, well, if they do happen to add in any more items, at least you know kind of how old the video is, so forth. Anyways, let's just go and jump straight into it. So first things first is the flashlight. Uh, flashlight, we're going to start with the basic evidence anyways, but uh, I know there's a lot to go and look at, especially if you're new to the game, but we're going to look at the flashlight. And the flashlight can always be located on this shelf here. So you've got shelf one, shelf two, and it's always going to be located here. These are your flashlights. Okay, it's a standard flashlight. You just switch it on, turn it on, off you go. Now when you do go and equip it, you can go ahead and right click it as you can see here or you can switch it put it in your inventory if you will and then press t on the keyboard and you can basically go ahead and leave it on the background like so so you can even go ahead and wield it like this or you can go ahead and put it here and then hold another item for example get the idea so it's a standard flashlight if your flashlight ever happens to start blinking so it kind of looks like this it basically means you're being hunted by the ghosts. So the ghosts will go ahead and try and look for you and kill you. But standard flashlight, off you go, all right? Nice and easy, nice and quick. All right, on to the next one. We have got an EMF reader. EMF reader is located on the left-hand shelf. And uh, a maximum that you can have is two of them right here. So when you go ahead and pop it on, you can just left-click it when it's on the ground if you want to. But you can go press E and then right-click it when you've got it on you. So MEMF reader is essentially going to detect, detect ghost activity and total activity and so forth. Uh, this just basically means uh, for any ghost that happens to like move a door or if it happens to tap on a window or something like that flicks a light switch on and off the idea is it's not directional it's position based so if this door happened to be tampered with if i just walk up towards the door and look at it like here it doesn't matter where i have a look at it as long as the uh, as long as the emf is over it um my emf will go to level two now um it can also go to level three as well uh, this is mostly if ghosts are throwing objects, I believe. It can also go to level 4, um, and that is mostly when a ghost has appeared, or a ghost manifestation. So it's normally to do something with the ghost, whether it be the mist of the ghost, not a ghost orb, but the mist of the ghost, or it means the ghost has popped up, tried to spook you, and then disappear. That's normally what 4 means. Now, in order to go and get EMF 5, the ghost needs to have emf5 as evidence which you will see back here so evidence found emf level 5 you can find out which ghost has evidence just by scrolling through them so hypothetically banshee has emf level 5 um whereas something like poltergeist does not have emf level 5 so uh there is a i believe it's a 25 percent chance that any time any emf activity goes off so a one in four chance that it will jump to level five, which is why sometimes you'll notice when you go in, your EMF, the first sign of activity, instantly goes to level five. It's not because the ghost is heavily attacking. It's not because you're massively under threat. It's because if you do happen to have it as an objective, as uh, the ghost has it as an evidence, then it can just a 25%, a one in four chance of it actually procking level five. Hopefully that makes sense to you, okay? But EMF reader, really good for you to kind of roam around if you just want to go and use it in your right hand and trying to detect some ghost activity remember doors windows books objects stuff like that being moved around um, always try and put the emf reader over it just to see if it happens to proc level five okay so that's the emf reader we're just going to throw that back uh, up next we got the spirit box um now during this hopefully on this part here i should go ahead and have a video that will play just in a second but a, a spirit box basically will go ahead and detect your phrases that you talk towards it so you can either go ahead and hold it or you can throw it on the ground but the idea is you need to be within the proximity of the ghost and uh, whenever you ask a particular question the ghost will go and respond and hopefully i'll just go and put a quick video up here so you guys can see exactly what it looks like where are you How old are you? Do you want us to speak? So as you can see there, you can go ahead and ask particular questions. Now I'll put the questions up on the screen here, but it's mostly seem to be categorized, uh, at least for now. Again, this may change in the future, but for now, it's mostly things like location. Try and ask, where is it? Um, 
are you near? Are you close? What is your location? Something like that. Uh, second things I go ahead and ask are things like age. How old are you? Are you young? Are you old? So forth. And then the third thing I go and ask is miscellaneous. Can we speak? Should I be here? What do you want me to do? Are there any spirits here? Um, those kind of uh, phrases tend to trigger it a bit more. Now keep in mind Spirit Box is mostly something, and uh, we could take this with a pinch of salt here, but Spirit Box is mostly something that uses uh, is used better in the dark, so you tend to want the lights off. Whether or not you want the breaker off is not actually always true, but it can go ahead and help there. And also technically talking to the ghost, so looking at the board and saying the ghost's name can also go ahead and help as well. So in this case here, Sandra Thompson, shout out to Sandra as a good example, but if I happen to go and say Sandra, or or Sandra Thompson then go ahead and start talking to it that tends to get a bit more of a response as well now spirit box will only go off if you are um, again near the ghost and it will only go off if the ghost has a spirit box as an evidence if it does not have the spirit box as an evidence so for example Banshee does not have spirit box it will not talk for it whereas poltergeist has spirit box which means it will talk to you simply turn it on by just pressing rest right click and then from there onwards hold V in game and ask a question where are you so it detects it but there's nothing detected so it recognized my voice and it's got the voice recognition but it didn't there's nothing happening because there's no ghost inside the truck. Well, thank God for that, hey? <laughs> thank God for that. Anyways, up next, we've got the ghost writing book. There's not an awful lot to go and say about this one. It's just a standard writing book. Uh, as you can see, it's empty right now. If it happens to have writing in it, and believe me, it's big and bold, you will go and notice it. It'll say, like, leave or die. It'll say, die, 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 get out, run, something like that. Or it will draw some pretty, pretty little symbols in the book as well. Um... It will be fairly obvious that it's written in the book. Okay, so whenever you go ahead and have this, you basically just want to enter the room with the ghost and then literally just throw it on the ground. Always try and make sure it's somewhat placed upwards. Try not to flip it over because otherwise you're not going to be able to see it like this. Um, if you do have it in your hands, the ghost can also write when it's in your hands as well. So sometimes that can be a little bit spoopy, but just be prepared for that as well. But that's basically what the ghost writing book is. Up next is the UV light. So that's this one located on this shelf over here. You can have a maximum of two of these as well. Uh, UV light is essentially there to, again, I should have some videos up here on the screen. It's to go ahead and detect things like handprints on doors, fingerprints on light switches, handprints on windows. All of those are evidence. So if you happen to see any handprints or fingerprints, that basically means that inside your journal, you want to go to put, put in fingerprints as evidence. Now it can also go ahead and see footprints whenever a ghost stands in salt. Uh, so is this thing down here, which we'll get to a bit later. Um, that is not evidence. Um, all it basically means, if you do go and see footprints, you just eliminated one ghost, but we'll get to salt a little bit later there. But UV light, again, can also flash on and off whenever you're being hunted. Um, unfortunately, you can't put it in the back and then press something like T and do that. It's only flashlights that you can do that with, so I can't... If you ever want to go and use it, you have to have it equipped to go and use it, okay? So anyways, that's basically UV light, mostly used there for any kind of ghost interaction, doors, windows, so forth, all right? Up next, we have now got the photo camera. Now, this is an interesting one so the photo camera is your money maker um, but it's also good for sub evidence and it's also good for one particular ghost as well to help uh, distinguish uh, that ghost very very quickly so up on the screen real quick there's going to be a whole block of text up here more unlikely um, but it's categories and categorized so there's a whole bunch of different categories that the uh, camera can go and get you extra money on like bones dead players so forth now keep in mind um if you take multiple pictures of uh, interactions, you don't get extra money. If it says interaction once over a photo, so if I go over here and I go towards my journal, so photos are here, as you can see, that's that's four there, that's eight there, and that's 10. You have only got maximum of 10 photos you can take. So if I take one photo like this and I right click, you can also go and see the photo in the bottom right, um, but you're also going to see the photo here. Now, as you can see, unfortunately, I can never take that photo back and I can't override it, at least for now. Um, that basically means one of my uh, nine photos is used up and it's somewhat essentially wasted. Now, you do know you've got a successful photo, whether it be of the ghost or an interaction, a bone, a Ouija board, a player, whatever it may be, it will have a title above it, okay? It'll say fingerprints or something like that. Um, if it has no title above it, 
So it doesn't say ghost here, for example. It means that you haven't actually successfully got the picture. Now, please go and keep in mind the game is out quite early and there are going to be some bugs. But for the most part, hopefully that helps you, okay? Um, the camera is also good against the phantom. The idea is that if the ghost uh, manifestation pops up, so you see the ghost in the corner of the room and it's just standing there. It's not haunting you. It's not doing anything. It's just popped up, showing its presence, chilling in the corner. You can actually walk a little bit closer towards it. If you take a photo of it and right click, if it happens to disappear on that photo the exact moment you took the photo it's either one of two things most of the time it should just mean that basically you took a photo of it it's a phantom if it disappears on the photo it's a phantom however you can also do in this do this during hunt phase as well it doesn't stop the phantom from hunting you but it does go ahead and basically turn the phantom invisible it's not only the best thing to go and do that but um, it does go ahead and tell you instantly in one evidence it's not a main evidence it's just a sub evidence that it can tell you that it's phantom uh, the second thing is you might have took a picture and it might have been like right at the very end that you left the ghost up too long and it tries to like haunt you show its presence in the room for about let's just say hypothetically 20 seconds then you took the picture on the 19th seconds and then it was going to fade anyways so um just keep that in mind all right but for the most part when you do take the picture of it, it, it if it goes pretty much right there and then the moment it pops up then the odds are it's a phantom okay don't overly always rely on it it's just good sub evidence if you uh if you want to right sorry i'm just reading my notes here on to the next one is video camera now video cameras are these things here these are mostly used for detecting ghost orbs on the screen now i'm just going to show you over here how the camera works to start off with so over here you've got um i'm currently in asylum which is one of the biggest maps it is the biggest map in the game um if i left click on the mouse i rotate through the cameras okay i think these controls will change in the future but uh rotate through the cameras by using left click and once i get to the place that i want i click on the keyboards and i can toggle night visions so on or off now if you have lights on it's a bit harder to go and see a night vision it's quite piercing um you need night vision on so you want the lights off and you're going to see a ghost orb again I, I probably would have put this up on the screen now for you guys to go and see but essentially that's what video cameras do as well now when you do go to pick up a video camera um and you hold it like this if you do want to go and place it down hold left click to rotate as you can see here, if you go ahead and right click it, you'll see on the right hand side, it goes from red to green. You want it on green, press F to place whenever you're ready and off you go, it will be right there. So if I now go and rotate cameras over here, just real quick for you, bam, 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 bam. you see I've got 16 instead of 15 now, bam, bam. And as you can see, that's how piercing it could be when light is really, really on it. Um, but this is basically used for detecting ghost orbs. Uh, on top of that, uh, or the next one coming up next, is the bipods. So the way that the bipods work are that is instead of looking for flat surfaces like so, you can basically use a bipod. And as you can see, if I hover over these, you can see that you you can put the camera on top of them. Um, so what I'm going to go and do is press F. The camera is now on top of that. I'm just going to crouch underneath it. I'm going to go and left click to make sure it's on. And then I'm going to pick it up by the choke of the neck, just kind of around here. And I can carry the camera and the bipod around. Now, unfortunately, if I do try to switch, if I press Q here and switch my items, you can't switch and put the camera like on your back and then carry other items. If you're going to carry the bipods, you always carry the bipods. Whereas if you want to carry the camera, you can switch and come back to it. You see what I mean? It'll be in your inventory. You can hold a maximum of three items. If you're on VR, you can actually hold four items. But you always need one hand for a door to like open and close. So um, for the most part, just rule of thumb, you can hold three items. It's just easier to understand that. Right. Anyways, so that's basically the video cameras. Uh, sorry, that's video cameras and bipods. Up next, we've got the thermometer. Um, you'll get quite familiar with this item right now. This is quite a powerful tool inside the game. Most people go and use this. So um, what we're gonna go do is right click to switch it on. Excuse me, once we switched it on, you can see uh, degrees over here. Now you can have this in Celsius or you can have this in Fahrenheit. Now I don't quite know the translation of Fahrenheit, so if someone can go ahead and write it down in the comment section for me, please do. But in Celsius, that's mostly what I'm working with here. Anything beneath 12.9 on the dot and under is ghost activity anything under 2.9 degrees celsius and under is freezing temperatures so this is how you know if you've got a ghost with freezing temperatures again so 2.9 and under for freezing temperatures 12.9 that there's some kind of activity going on in this area it's very easy for you to go ahead and just basically click it and then basically aim okay so you just basically go and aim with it and that's how the uh, thermometer works very good tool very easy tool to go ahead and use there uh, up next is the lighter which is this thing down here very easy 
a thing to go ahead and understand here. Just right click it, it just sends a little bit of light. It's, it's seriously not a lot of light. If you use this in the dark, it doesn't actually do anything. It lights up your hand and that's basically it. Maybe in the future it might go and change. The lighter is basically a combination item that is used for candles and also used for smudge sticks, uh, which we, we will get into just in a second. Um, you can also use these on candles in the map. If there's like candles in rooms, you can just right click this and press F on the candles and you'll light the candles up in rooms. I actually could just show you right here as an example. As you can see, there's one example. Uh, now we're on candles anyways. So to light a candle, um, as you can see, you would have to go and switch the lighter, turn it on and do it. Or there's another way you can go and do it. Just put the lighter in your inventory as a secondary and then press F. You can do it that way as well. So two different ways you can go and light candles, um, or apparently you can do that as well. That's actually something that I've just learned. I never knew you could do that. Uh, apparently you could just throw it and if it connects with another candle, we can light it. I'm not too sure if that's intended. I've generally never said that before. <laughs> hey, I learned something every day with this, okay? So I'm not just teaching you guys, I'm teaching myself. Uh, keep in mind, if you do happen to use the candles, the ghost can blow out the candle. Uh, it doesn't happen all of the time, but just keep that in mind. Uh, up next, we've got the crucifix. Now, the crucifix is definitely going to be one of the most asked ones. Now, I've got some tips for this to go ahead and help you, um, but you won't always use this, but you'll be surprised what you can utilize. I know it sounds a bit weird, but I'm just going to explain it. So what is the crucifix? The way that the crucifix works is, is that it's not about having it in your hands. It's about basically having it on the ground, okay? At least for now, there's no way to go and see if the ghost consumes charges. This crucifix is to prevent a hunt. So a ghost can pop up and scare you. Ooh, spooky. But when you're being hunted, there's a few ways to tell. Your lights will flash. The flashing lights everywhere will go and happen. The front door and the back door, side doors will lock so you can't get out the house. And another thing is, you won't hear it right now, but if I hold B, did you hear that? That's my radio. If, you, if I hold B and instead of hearing you hear loads of static on the radio. That's my impression, by the way. If you hear loads of static on the radio, that just basically means that you're being hunted as well. I mostly do that when I'm when I'm doing challenges in the game and I'm not running flashlights or candles and I do no light runs. Um, I will hold B to hear if I'm being attacked or not. Um, so if you do, do get your candle blown out, you can always go and do that. But the crucifix basically just means that it prevents it from hunting. Now a ghost will only hunt you basically to go and kill you. All right, but this doesn't stop manifestations. So the question is, how do I know where to put it? How do you know where to put it? Do you just go into a room and just throw it down? No, that's not quite how it works. Um, I'm actually just gonna turn around right now and show you something real quick. I realize I'm in a really good spot to go and show you guys this. So I'm just gonna go and open this real quick and I'm gonna go and turn this light on and I'll show you what I mean. It has a three meter, imagine like circle around it, essentially. So let's say that the ghost is in this room, scary. If I go and drop this down, does this protect me from the entire room? Good God, no. It only protects me from an area around the crucifix. So then you might ask, well, how do you know where to place it then? Uh, this is where it gets tricky. Um, I actually paired this, and I can show you tips and tricks in a second. I heard the ghost, it's just over there. It just opened the door. <laughs> so um, you can you can um, pair this with salt, you can pair this with motion sensors and infrared light sensors. Um, it's an easier way to see the Roman pattern of the ghost. And if you happen to notice that it roams past these sensors or the salt a bit more often than what it did on other things, you'll actually start to realize where to place a crucifix. So for example, if I put uh, motion sensors on this wall over here and all of these kept beeping but i put motion sensors down here and these ones won't beeping it gives me an idea of where to place the crucifix well why would i put it down there if it's not beeping the odds are it might be over here so what i'll do is i'll place it in that area it gives you more of an idea where to go and place the crucifix it's a bit of a hard thing to go and use but it is very very good each crucifix you can have a maximum of two of them as of right now each crucifix prevents two hunts Okay, now you will have to go and keep your eyes on it and remember where it is because once it uses both charges, you won't see the crucifix. It'll be gone from the floor. So that basically now means the ghost can hunt you. Do you get the idea? Um, accordingly as well, what you could go ahead and do with the um, crucifix is the Banshee fears the crucifix more. So instead of a three meter kind of radio going around it, it's a five meter radio going around it. So it's actually bigger. So it works better against Banshees. But unfortunately, where it's not as, well, not as good. Well, I don't say unfortunately here. What you can go and do with it, I haven't tested this one, so please go and keep that in mind. Um, if you're in a group, if you hold the crucifix and it's a banshee, 
banshees are known to target players it mostly targets the first person on the list that is not basically dead who's inside the building it uses its power to essentially try to teleport near that player then basically if the player is connected by line of sight it then starts a hunt right it's a bit weird anyways if the banshee's coming for you and you know you're the target accordingly if you do actually wield the crucifix again i haven't tested this so i apologize if you do wield the crucifix it will basically change target it'll be like well no i'm not going to take you because you got the crucifix so i'm going to go and focus on someone else so sometimes that can be a good way to distinguish if it's banshee or not i don't do an awful lot of group runs i mostly do a lot of solo runs but again hopefully that gives you an idea as to how crucifixes work um and i'll show you kind of like how to pair it with salt and motion sensors uh, just in a moment uh, up next we've got smudge sticks uh, oh no sorry up next we've got salt uh, speaking of the devil so salt what am i going to do with salt the main usage of salt essentially is to eliminate banshee now they've also added salt as an objective to the boards so uh, you've got a different objectives and so forth so sometimes up here might be objective to uh place down salt um if a ghost walks through the salt make sure a ghost walks through the salt and you've got the objective okay so the way that the salt works is it's got three charges all right um so here we go one two three it's got three charges there now if a ghost happens to walk through the part of salt uh, again i should have some videos for this if the ghost has to go ahead and walk through the salt um you'll happen to go ahead and notice that the salt will be kind of crumbled down a little and the idea is that it's supposed to go and leave footprints if it does go walk through it now keep in mind and i say this very very loosely because i'm not too sure if this is intended or if it's a bug some ghosts can crush soul and i'm not seeing any kind of footstep placement afterwards now the only one that's not supposed to do that is wraith which means if it stands in soul and you don't see any footprints but you hear footsteps like really loud footsteps but you don't see any footprints you use a uv light when you pair it so let's go and get a uv light real quick so let's say that it walks through the uh, thing. I use a UV light. You can see it's crushed. I might be able to see some footsteps. Um, the Wraith won't leave footsteps. That's how you know it's a Wraith. Okay, that plus freezing temperatures can help you eliminate a Wraith nice and quick. So uh, it can be interesting. But what I like to go and do as well with salt, and just to give you guys an idea, is I like to place salt in different areas. So if I'm in a big area or a big room like this, I will place salt in different corners of the room. If it happens to proc in some corners of the room, I get an idea where to go roam pattern is again helps me distinguish where to go and place crucifixes just a little tip you don't have to do it i'd mostly only go and do it for objectives and so forth until you're comfortable but when you get more and more solo runs in you this is a good way to know if you're dealing with a bit more of a roamer ghost or if you're just dealing with something that's a little bit more stationary and so forth but salt can be used as a as a secondary if you will up next we've got smudge sticks now smudge sticks are in my opinion one of my most favorite items in the game because they literally are a get out of jail free card so smudge sticks will require a lighter on you what you're going to go and do is have a light as your secondary and then whenever you're ready press f see this it's basically going to smudge the room like this now what does this basically do number one it's an objective you know you're in the correct room on the objective if you smudge the correct room Okay, it will instantly go ahead and erase the uh, the event up here. When the smudge stick is done, you'll see it changes color. You can basically drop it to the ground. You can't use that anymore. Just ignore it. It's it's now burned out. Um, the smudge stick can also be used to stop and sorry to prevent spirits from hunting for 120 seconds. So if you happen to know you're in a spirit room and so forth, and you're out of crucifixes, you can always smudge stick the room before it hunts to also tell it to like calm down a little, settle down a little spirit, don't attack. Uh, the other thing that you can go and do with the uh, smudge stick is uh, and this is the best one is let's say a ghost is just about to attack you let's say it's just about to touch you if you go to press f you purify the air with white sage basically the go instead of the ghost killing you the ghost will now turn away and start to kind of roam a little now, now listen to me when i say this you've got about like five seconds to remove where you are just get the hell out of that position start moving onwards start moving away look after yourself all right because the ghost is definitely going to come back towards you you cannot stack smudge sticks it will have an immunity the ghost will so you can't just go ahead and use one then pick up another use another then pick up another use another so forth it doesn't work like that you can't stack them but it is a get out of jail free card for at least at least like once during that hunt and then the ghost has about like a five to ten second somewhat immunity where you can't use another smudge smudge stick so please go and keep that in mind okay but it is very very useful if you're in a bad spot if you feel scared and you're like okay guys i don't think i'm gonna be good in this team let me just hold a smudge stick and a lighter and a flashlight if it comes to me i'll just 
magic and look after myself. At least I can now run, okay? And God forbid, if it is a Revenant, this is a very useful tool for you to challenge the Revenant in a game of chicken. And the Revenant is the quickest ghost in the game, one of the quickest along with Jin, but the Revenant doesn't slow down for anything. Besides from line of sight. So if, if you are in the line of sight of a revenant and you want to see if the ghost is a revenant You can challenge it to chicken. It will sprint at you You basically go ahead and do this light it up and they'll try and break line of sight with it Once you break line of sight with the revenant it goes nice and slow But otherwise if it sees you it charges like a bull. Okay, so keep that in mind. It's a very very good tool I really like smudge sticks. Uh, try and get in the habit of using them up next, we've got the strong flashlight, which is located on the right-hand shelf. You can see there's four of them down here. So just unlike the... Uh, if I go and take this one here, and I go and take this one... Uh, what else have I got on me? Oh, no, I guess you can't hold on to both of them. But if I go and take this one here real quick, you can see, just have a little look, how much that lights up. It's not an awful lot. This is a normal flashlight. And if I go ahead and grab the uh, strong flashlight down here, bam, you can see just how much more that lights up. Very good on uh, larger maps. Um, definitely you want to go and get them for larger maps. They're about 50 bucks or something like that currently. Um, I'd always invest in one. Look after yourself, all right? Standard flashlight, essentially. Motion sensors. Now, motion sensors are on this shelf. Um, this is where some people get confused with these ones. So motion sensors are on the left-hand side. You'll see that it always has this red light and then right next to it, that is gonna be a green light. The way that motion sensors essentially work, if I just go and take three of them, is I can walk up over here and I can go and find a place on the wall. I can press F, I can press F, and I can press F. Now the way that it would essentially work is when I go across the motion sensor, it will change from red to green, as you can see here. You'll also hear a beep in the truck if I just, if I just shut my mouth for a second ever so slightly you're going to hear a beep in the truck um so if i go ahead and show you uh, on the screen here you're also going to see your motion sensors are lined up this isn't the best angle here i should have another bit of footage uh, overriding this one so you guys can go and see it a bit better but motion sensors are a good way for you to not only do an objective on the board but again to also somewhat dictate as to where the ghost might be roaming within that vicinity if it's leaving the room or if it's in the room roaming in particular corners you can go and use motion sensors to your advantage I think it does anything within like a meter or potentially a meter and a half in front of it. So it doesn't go too, too far and it's not a widespread. It's a very narrow line in front of you, but you can go and use motion sensors like that. Now up next is the one to the right of it. These are called sound sensors. Sound sensors are absolutely uh, great on bigger maps, as you can see here, Asylum. So I'm just going to go ahead and whack one in here real quick. Let's just go in here. Let's just turn around and put this straight on the wall. And then let's turn back around. And if I go and look on this map over here, look how much area that's now covered. Oh, also a lot of sound here inside the lobby. So basically it'll give me an idea that because there's so much sound going on in the lobby, I might have an idea where to detect it and where to look. You know as well as I do that I heard the ghost earlier. So we know it is in the lobby anyways. It's actually, I believe, over here to the right hand side. It's just you'll... The, the best tool out of everything, if I can give you one tip right now and stop going over the items, is the best tool inside the game is your ears. When you go inside, shush for a second and listen. You'll be surprised what you can hear. You'll hear doors opening, you'll hear doors closing, you'll be you'll be hearing things being dropped on the ground, things being thrown around. Um, it'll just basically tell you, do I go left? Do I go right? I do this a lot in Asylum in high school where I basically just walk straight to the center and I be quiet. And then I just turn my volume up, I listen to the left, listen to the right, I hear something, I start heading that direction. Rather than clearing room by room by room by room, I just use my ears and I'm like, right, off we go. And then we start heading over there. But sound sensors are absolutely uh, great on bigger maps, especially if you've got someone inside the van as well, who can tell you what they hear, what they look like, and so forth. You get the idea, the strength of it and what's kind of going on. So that's basically a sound sensor. Up next, we've got sanity pills. Um, again, I should have this on the screen for you guys. It is a single usage sanity pill. You simply right click it to go ahead and restore 40, that's four zero percent of sanity. Um, you can have a maximum of four of these. It doesn't scale with players, it's just four of them. Um, I do want to go and say something about Team Sanity though, that can go ahead and give you guys a good tip here. Um, team Sanity, keep in mind, it is Team Sanity. So if you've got 100% Sanity and I've got 0% Sanity, that doesn't mean, oh, by the way, the ghost won't hunt you when you go inside. No, because my sanity is so low, I'm lowering the team's average sanity. The lower your average sanity is, the more chance of the ghost attacking. So if you're single and solo and I go and do this, Bam, I go ahead and restore that back up as much as I possibly can here. Don't worry if it says like 98 or 99, you're still up towards your 100s. Um, 
yeah, it's based on Team Sanity. So uh, just keep that in mind, all right? Keep that in mind. Um, up next, we've got the infrared light sensors. So again, just how I was talking about the motion sensors, uh, the infrared light sensors, uh, this truck getting messy now, the infrared light sensors are similar, except from the fact that they just basically put light. So if I go and put one here, I go and put one there, and I go ahead and put one uh, here or something, uh, you'll see. I can hear a tap. I can hear the ghost. Turn Sorry, I know the ghost is in the bathroom to my right. Um, so you can hear uh, and see here. So as you see, look, it's not going off. It's not going off. It's not going off. But if I walk just a little bit closer, it goes off. Now, this doesn't beep in the fan. There's no way for you to go ahead and track these. It's just really good for visuals. I basically use them if I'm in the room with the ghost. Again, where should I put my crucifixes? Oh, this light keeps going off. This light here it's just seriously keeps going. But these lights over here are not going off. Right, let me put my crucifix over here just in case. Because the road pattern is lighting up an awful lot over there. You get the idea? So that's what I tend to go and do here with the light sensors. That's to go and move across them there. You can see I light all of them up. These are also good if you've got a camera in the area. So if you've got a camera on a bipod and you want to go ahead and uh, not be in the room anymore, but you still also want to try and see roughly where in the room it could be, again, use the light sensors, uh, use the motion sensors to get a rough idea as to where it could be. You can pair it with a camera and lovely jubbly. All right, that's basically what you can go and do with them. Up next, we've got the parabolic microphone. Now, this is something that I think needs love in the game currently. Um, it doesn't have any sound when you go and turn it on, um, but this thing here isn't overly used that much. As you can see, when I right click it, it's already telling me about 3.0. The idea is that unlike the sound sensors on the wall, this is a traveling sound sensor. It's a portable sound sensor, if you will. Um, this can work accordingly, uh, horizontally and vertically. The only issue that I have with this at the moment is it doesn't seem to be detecting all sounds. So if the ghost turns on the tap, it doesn't seem to be detecting the tap, at least for me. Again, the game's new. There might be some bugs here and there. I think this will go and get some love or some fixes. Um, but yes, it's just a big shuttle dish that you'll go ahead and carry around with you. And uh, if you point it in the general direction of where you think you hear a noise, See, so the ghost opened the door, and right now it's not detecting any noise. Um, it should definitely be protecting, detecting that, because I'm aiming in the right vicinity. And I can also hear the tap right now. Um, yeah, it's not really doing it. It's a, it's a bit of a weird one, but yeah, the parabolic microphone, you can go and take that. Um, it actually is good against poltergeists. Uh, the reason being, if you go to the ghost room, and you start looking around the room, if you then aim the parabolic microphone out of the room and somewhere different, the poltergeist has got one of the biggest roams in the map, but it's not so much that it roams, it's just that it can it can basically throw books in other rooms, which is why it's really misleading where the poltergeist is. So if I, uh, in Asylum, and I, uh, my goodness, I had to prove this, um, I had a room here, for example, with the poltergeist, I put all of the items in this area down here and it was still throwing those items around all the way down there. And until you go and play this map, you'll start to realize just how long of that travel that is. Poltergeist has a very big range. It touches everything kind of going around it. It's like it's got multiple hands everywhere. So uh, parabolic microphone can be a good way to be like, huh, why is there movement down there when we know the ghost room is here? That shouldn't make any sense. Like that's really far away. Ah, poltergeist. So that's a good way to kind of somewhat counter it. Um, Outside of that, we've also got the glow stick. Uh, the glow stick is on this shelf up here. Uh, you can currently have two of them. Now, the glow stick, just in my opinion, isn't something that I'll use an awful lot. It's exactly like a UV light in that sense, but it doesn't project an awful lot of light, as I'm about to go and showcase right here, right now. I'm just going to walk in here. Can you see everything? Good, because I can't. But however, if I throw it on the ground, it does project more light, so it is better when it's on the ground. And again, it could also be paired to go and show footsteps on the ground. If you've got piles of salt, you can go ahead and pair it with piles of salt um, and try and help you see footprints somewhat nearby. So you can just crack them by holding right, by pressing right click. There doesn't seem to be a duration when it runs out, so once you crack it, it seems to be lit up for the rest of the mission. Um, I've never had a time where these have run out, but you can compare it with uh, salt and so forth, stuff like that. And again, you can also use it to uh, get fingerprints, handprints, and window uh, handprints on windows and doors and stuff like that. So. Right, and finally, uh, at least this is the last bit of equipment right now. Uh, sorry this video has gone on hopefully not too long, but I'm hoping you guys get a better understanding of uh, equipment and not just uh, the basic understanding. Hopefully I'm telling you guys how you can chain equipment together to give you guys a good understanding of, like, I'll pair this with this and pair that with that and so forth. And I'll show you another tip with the camera in a second. Um, so this is a head-mounted camera. The wonderful thing about this is if I press E here um, and I pick up one item, two item, three item, 
you'll see that the camera doesn't actually use another inventory space. So the camera you can just put on your head, it's on my character's head right here now, and if I happen to go over towards this, there'll be an extra camera, camera 17 I believe, if I go towards this, yeah, that's my camera there, and if I look, I don't know if you kind of, yeah, if I look over there, you can see on the screen, it's kind of looking where I am. So if you happen to go and have a friend who's inside and uh, you want to know where he is uh, on a big map, always try and pop one of these on your head and uh, it's a good way for you to go ahead and have a little look for him. And again, keep in mind, turn it to night vision and you can also see ghost orbs on their helmet and such. If you don't have a camera in that room and you say, yo, have you got a video camera on your head? And they turn around and say, yeah, I have. I've got a headset on. you be like, yo, can you just stand still for a second and just move left and right in the room so I can look for a ghost orb? So sometimes you can basically use your friends as portal cameras <laughs> it's pretty good there and um, the other thing I wanted to go ahead and just show you real quick and something else that I like to go and do is um, because cameras are really good for visuals um I probably might not be able to go and see it here, but when I put the camera down on the ground, something that I like to go and do is if I'm ever traveling towards the area, and because you've got a lot of tools to bring with you, especially if you're playing solo, that's a lot of tools to bring with you. You won't bring every single little thing, but it's still a lot of tools to bring with you. I actually like to go and use the camera as a visual buff for myself, aka what does that mean? So if I go ahead and take this, and I go ahead and take the EMF, what I can go and do is where the camera is, it doesn't show you this, but I'm going to teach you a tip. On the left hand bottom, bottom hand side of the camera you don't want anything there so face the camera turn around right here throw the book so it's the right hand side of the camera throw the emf so it's the right hand side of the camera okay what i will do here is i will turn that off and is that off i'll turn those off just for a second hopefully i'll be able to see this and in the bottom left hand, do you see why I say bottom, not bottom left? Look, this unfortunately covers some things. So don't put it in the bottom left hand side, at least for now. If this ever gets removed, then go for it, okay? Uh, 11, so it should be 16. Oh, unfortunately, it's a bit it's a bit too lit up from the truck. Um, but what you will be able to see in the bottom right hand side, you'll be able to see the ghost writing book. And if the ghost ever writes in it when you're away, you can look on the camera and be like, ah, it just written the book. So you can go ahead and pair items together and chain items together. Anyways, um, this video has been way longer than I anticipated. So I actually apologize that I overshot this. I actually wanted to do like a 15, 20 minute video. Forgive me. I apologize. Either way, I'm really hoping you guys enjoyed this. I didn't want to kind of like half ass the video. I really wanted to make sure you guys understood what you was doing with the items and how you can chain them and pair them together um, there's actually still quite a few more tips and tricks i can give you but i don't want to go and push the video any longer than i am right now so all i can go and say is seriously if you did enjoy the video it's not much going to ask could you leave a like on the video share the video with a friend as well if you think there's someone else out there who would really enjoy these kind of videos to get them into the game where i've broken down everything remember there's timestamps as well so you can always tell them to go to which particular uh, item device if you want to if you've got any questions or if you want to go and know what else could you pair with something and how could you use a particular item effectively then please do not hesitate to go and reach out to me by leaving a comment down uh, inside the comment description comment description comment section and uh, i will try and get around to you whenever i can and um, this is my first phasmophobia video on the channel and if this goes well i'd love to go and upload more so this is kind of all down to you guys i appreciate you clicking on the video i really do and if you are new to the channel today if you are having a good time consider hitting the subscribe button i'd love to go and get more content like this out for you guys but that's basically it from me what it do guys my name was clark i hope you guys enjoyed the video today and i will catch you guys again in the next video <laughs>